Welcome back to the show. Um, OK, it's time to get our next guest out. And I'm very excited he's here because on his programme, he's taken on such issues as, and I'm quoting from the titles of these things on the show, prove I'm a dad, then I'll prove I haven't slept with my mum. <laughs> that was one episode. <laughs> another one, another one of my favourites. How could my boyfriend destroy his own face? <laughs> and this is perhaps the best one of all. How can I be your baby's dad when I'm not Asian? <laughs> I've lost count of the number of times I've said that to my wife. Uh, uh, it's a guilty pleasure, perhaps, but I enjoy it. Here is, before he comes out, him doing what he does best. Jeremy Kyle in action. Look at this. Does everybody smoke Shut weed, up! not work, have unprotected sex and talk too much? I'm going to do the results. Be quiet. Well, why do you have kids if you can't afford to pay for them? Because we live in a society that wipes people's backsides like you, and it's a joke. <laughs> it doesn't stop you having sex with four women, does it? <laughs> this guy is not worth it. You've got family and you've got friends and you need to aim hard in this guy. We're going to support you and work with you, OK? OK. Change your life, he's worth it. There you go. That's tough love in action. Will you please welcome Mr. Johnny Kyle? <laughs> There's some great moments in those clips. Thank you. Good to have you here, Mr. Kyle. Thank come and sit down. OK, I'm going to start by saying I like your show. When it first started on TV, I thought, oh, my God, this is awful. This man's a maniac. Why are they doing it to these poor... People and then I grew to like what you were doing very much indeed. <laughs> do you encounter that a lot though? Do people say to you, "I never used to like the show, now I do," or, or do they up, do, you know, kind of? Uh, are they I think it's marmite, Jonathan. You know, I, I think that people. You said guilty pleasure before the break. I think that's it. I think people, um, they either love it or they don't like it. But a lot of them will say, "I don't like that show." But you know, the other day on Tuesday when you did that, and they'll go, "Oh, that's outrageous." Uh, listen, it's eight years, isn't it? It's two and a half thousand shows. I didn't realise you spoke like this in real life as well. I thought... Because <laughs> you, you, you're kind of talking to me like you talk on the show. I figured there'd be What a, do you mean? Well, it, yeah, I know. You're not, you haven't told me to shut up yet, but... Uh, I wouldn't dream of it. I thought there'd be an on-screen Jeremy and an off-screen Jeremy, and I thought you'd be... But you actually do talk in those kind of fully created sound bites. What's that it's mean? like Well, you, they're like little packages. You could throw it out there. Don't get on about little packages. Oh, OK, well, OK, well, <laughs> seeing as you raised it, congratulations on the all-clear. Thank you very much. Because, Jeremy, you may have read this paper, he had a bout with testicular cancer. I did. Yeah, okay. came back from America last year and uh, literally three or four days before Christmas, went to the doctor's checkup, tumour straight away. Wow. Um, four days over Christmas, didn't know the results, um, which is pretty hard when you're looking at your kids, opening their presents. Um, and a bit of chemo and came out the other side. And, and, and it does, it tends to sort of refocus everything, really. It makes you think so much about life, really. And, and had you, were you aware that you had a problem before you went in? Not at all. So not you, at all. So you were one of those like, guys, because some guys, they yeah. think there's a problem and then they kind of not lie to themselves, but push it away. They don't want to deal I with it. I remember the guy saying to me, the surgeon, that, that if I could talk about it, it would benefit people enormously. Because men, there's two and a half thousand people, men, who die of testicular cancer in Great Britain every year. And because men don't like to check themselves. They don't well, want to go to the doctor, they're embarrassed, showing their bits off, whatever, and they turn a blind eye. It can be too late. I got really lucky. Really, really lucky. But it's a fascinating subject because you know, it can save lives, and it is a, you know, it's a good it thing is, for you uh, to go out and talk about it openly and honestly. Well, it, it was of no embarrassment to me at all. I'm being completely serious. I mean, you know, you have those moments in your life that are, are defining moments. And I remember waking up from the operation, and three of my... I mean, I was, it was horrible walking down to the to the theatre and saying goodbye to Carla and broke down in front of the anaesthetist and said to him, I think there are millions of people in Great Britain that would like to see me like this right now. And then don't remember anything else. Wow. And so then woke is, up, my best three mates in the world came in and we did this charity hold golf on, hold, on, hold on, let's enjoy that moment. Go on then. So, what? 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 <laughs> when you were breaking down like that then, were you, uh, were they'd already given you anaesthetic or you were drunk or what was it? In the no, morning I thought, I, no, I hadn't had the drugs at that point. So you were just emotional? I was crying my eyes out. Right. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it had spread. I didn't know quite what was going to happen to but me. I think people will be surprised to hear that of you. Obviously, you're in extraordinary circumstances. I was about to have a testicle no, removed. I know. Oh, that cool. <laughs> no, no, I don't think people think you're cool. I think they think you're cold. <laughs> Cold. No, I think people do think that of you. I don't. I personally don't think. Now I've met you, I don't think that's the case. But I think people thought, who is that cold bastard who will get some person? And you go, shut up! Who are you to tell me? You piece of, you are nothing. You are a piece of dirt. Blah 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 blah. Right? 
obviously you didn't say blah blah but you know the, the gist of it is there and people think that's a certain hardness and a certain coldness because often they are people who are in difficult circumstances themselves mm -hmm. and, uh, and but so it's honest isn't it i mean th there's the point you know we, we have this debate so much of the time there's there's 10 or 15 minutes what do you want me to do sit there and molly cuddle them at the end of the day if you're creating a life and not being responsible you're rushing around the place taking advantage you're beating people you're taking drugs you're drinking what do you want me to do it'll be all right that's why they're in the position they are so you get a bit of time people say to me what right do you have to say that to them and i go well they came on they asked yeah. So I'm only being honest. Listen, people don't, the thing about it is, I totally understand that 50% go, Ugh. but it's only me giving an opinion. Uh, are you concerned ever? You said, okay, these people want to come on the show, and presumably they do. They apply to come on the show. You oh. don't go and twist anyone's arm. Are you ever concerned about when people make charges of exploitation? They say, you've got people there. Sure, they want to be on the show, but do they really know what they're getting themselves into? Listen, the checks that take place, the 140-page Bible that was written before the Jeremy Carr show ever started, the aftercare service that is the best that there's ever been on a talk show we put last year i couldn't give you a definitive number jonathan but we put over 300 people into detox and rehab programs and you know what when people say to me well did all 300 change their lives hopefully but for me morally and i've got four kids if one does that then that more than justifies what we do yes it's honest but it's a Hold conflict your resolution your children in rehab no, they're not in rehab. <laughs> not yet. What I'm saying is, as a, as a, as a, as a father, right, yeah. I couldn't do that show if it was just that. No. We do our best, but people will always say, well, do you make a difference? What about you, though? What about you? You had a problematical past as well, didn't you? I know you're very open about this. You yeah. were addicted to gambling or certainly in trouble with gambling. You had gambling yeah, when debts. I was, when I was younger, uh, in my early 20s, um, I gambled too much. It's as simple as that. I managed to get it under control. And Are you, you a gambler? What's just horses, cards, what, slot machines? What oh, was I it? think at the time I would probably have gambled on, on most things, really, because you know you have that whole thing in your head, don't you, about, oh, I can win this, I can win that. For me now, it's a totally different kettle of fish, and I can, you know, again, people will say, what sort of experiences do you have? I don't have experiences of everything. I've got an experience of that. That doesn't make me a, a, a world authority on it. In, in anything, when people ask me an opinion, it's just... What I think, well, really. you don't need to necessarily have been through something to understand sure. how to help other people get out of it. What, how bad was your situation? Were you in trouble financially? Were you in trouble in relationships as a result? Of what? No, I had, a, I had financial trouble, and I got over that. So you and were I, in debt, basically? Yeah, and I, and, I, and I think that that was quite an interesting point, um, because you learn from that. And, and the other thing is, you know, when I look back and I, and I talk to people on the show, everybody makes mistakes, everybody's screwed up, everybody's said and done things that they regret, right? Not me. <laughs> Maybe one, Show me okay? Up to the break, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you're, I agree with you. Everyone no, has. No, what I'm saying is, and so you learn from that, yeah. and you go on with it, okay. and that's it. And I, I don't think you can have experienced everything, and so, I wouldn't ever say that. Uh, you seem to be someone who likes being in control. Am I right? Are you someone who has an issue being out of control? Can I just point out, and I, I didn't, you know, ever set out to do this, uh, certainly not on Saturday Night Television. You said that Jeremy Carl could appear cold and whatever yeah you know when i go home let's let's be honest i don't wear the trousers there isn't a man in the united kingdom who's married who's telling the truth if he says that his wife isn't in charge you've met mrs carl mrs carl is in charge yeah she told me what to do and i tell you what it was the best evening of my life <laughs> well, no, brilliant. You when he met my wife and me he looked at her and then he looked at me and he said you've definitely done better than she's done haven't you <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I love I love being at home. I was away for two years in America, and just you know, the last few months after the illness, three kids at home, an elder kid away, and it's nice because it's just away from all that stuff. How was it in America for you? you? You took the show over there, and obviously, in a way, I found it easier watching the American show than here because the, because of the fact that these people were quite near, I felt a bit more concerned. <laughs> For our country, seeing some of the people you had on. We and a little bit concerned for you, uh, but more concerned for the oval state of the United Kingdom. Yeah. Whereas when I look at the Americans one, I'm sort of enjoying it in a, in a perhaps a, a, an ungenerous way. I couldn't get over it. I, I mean, their names are so different, you know, on the general... In England, let, let's welcome Mary or Susan. So the first guest out was called Reminissa. 
I mean, you know, and, and, and Diogenes, and, and just, wow. just the weirdest well, thing. Beautiful but what they all did to me the whole time was they, they, they get really angry and they start throwing their, their bleeding shoes at me. They literally take their shoes <laughs> off and go, you lie me, I'm gonna tell you. Wow. I'm gonna... And for the first three months, no man in America ever passed the lie detector. No way at all. Okay, we have a lie detector tester up for you here this evening. Okay. Okay, you don't have to do this. We put it in the green oh, room. Oh, can I to set give the them questions? The, you can set the questions if you want. Can I do that? Okay, so uh, you that put your hand... really, really genuine. They, they put it? their hand on these. <laughs> okay, and this is here's one. Oh, yeah, there is one here. You can have this one. Put that there. Where do I put? Where you do put I put your hand on top of the prong oh, the things, hand. and they have. That's where the power will come at. And if you are telling the truth, it measures your pulse rate. Uh, if you're telling the truth, nothing will happen. If you're telling a lie, you will get a shock. An electric shock. Do you think this is fair? Are you all up for this? Zach, are you up for this? Yeah, let's do it. Tom, you okay for this? Do I have a choice? No, no. <laughs> Tom, Tom's not, not, really not if you want to play your record at the end of the show, you don't sound funny. I mean, you always have a choice. Tom, I bet you never thought you'd be on the Jeremy Carl show. I know, I'm chuffed to bits. <laughs> so, Tom, we asked you, have you ever pretended that a song is yours that you've written and, in fact, you've ripped it from somebody else? Hmm. No, he said no. That's the truth. No shock, Fantastic. no shock. OK, you got one for Zachary? Zachary, have you ever worn false ears in an intimate situation. <laughs> Not false ears, no. He speaks the truth. <laughs> Let's have one for the lovely Zoe. Zoe, contrary to what you said earlier, have you ever decided that you couldn't make it to the toilet whilst wearing a wetsuit and had to let it happen? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, she didn't. OK, Russell, it's all on you. Russell, are you enjoying tonight's show? Yes. Russell, let's do another one. Russell. Yep. <laughs> Have you ever won Rear of the Year? Yes. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> well, that's broke. Can I just be honest with you? This is broke. Only his one has an electric yeah, shock. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Russell, let's do another one. Russell. No, well, it's not. We've got let's that, do surely. <laughs> Russell, let's wire it up to your bollocks. <laughs> Russell, I, I think you've just given him an idea for his next series. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, um, thank you for coming on the show. Pleasure. You're a good sport, and also, really, I think what you do, you do it about as well as anyone can. It's Thanks, a good man. show, and I enjoy watching it, um, so I'm glad that you still do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Jeremy Kyle. Thank you very much. Stick around, Jeremy. Thank you very much. I'm just going to go and say hello because we're going to take a break now. After the break, I'll be talking...